Okay, so today uh, I'd like to welcome James Tonkin from Tonkin Plumbing in Aubrey and Wodonga. And uh, so welcome, James. Thank you for um, participating in this Business Spotlight series. So can I just ask you, uh, when you uh, think of, or who's the first person that you think of in terms of success? Oh, the first person I think of, uh, you put me on the spot there. Um, I've got a lot of people I look up to, obviously, um, you know, uh, over the years, um, been, uh, been involved in a lot of good businesses locally and, you know, follow a lot of um, yep. you know, good, great companies um, across the world now that we're in the digital age. Um, success for me, I mean, in, in a business sense, um, I think there's a, there's a lot of um, people that I look up to locally um, and particularly in the building industry. Um, mm -hmm. there's, there's a few guys that have been around for a, for a long time that have, that have um, earned themselves a great reputation and they're, they're people that I look up to and they've been guys I've been able to share, um, you know, thoughts with in meetings over the years. And I've got quite a few mentors in that respect. Yes. Um, yep. to, to name drop a few, I suppose, um, locally, I, I look back to the sort of the, the golden era of construction um, prior to the national builders sort of coming to town. That's when sort of a, lo a lot of the businesses that are still around today really cut their teeth and grew from the ground up. And um, mm. I, I look at, so um, I, I'm, first of all, I'm very proud of my father who started in that area as a, as a plumber back in the, in the 80s. Um, but people that, that Gary, my father, dealt with, um, you know, when they were both sort of backyard companies like Colin Joss and Gary Zorner, you know, mm -hmm. um, when they're a lot smaller than they are now, but they're they're still very humble guys, and they and they um and and they've been very good good to me over the years to continue that that um great relationship. Um, yes. And somebody that some, some gentlemen that I really aspire to, but th there's plenty of others, that's for sure. Good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, and that's one of the great things about the Albury Wodonga region is that, you know, in terms of um, successful businesses within the region, there's a great number of them, and um, you know, I, I think you need to congratulate congratulate yourself for actually searching out some of these more successful people and building those relationships with them. So well done. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Um, so I, I guess for people who are, are watching this this interview, just explain a little bit about what you do and for how long you're you're actually been doing it. Okay. Um, yep. So. Uh, Tonkin Group, uh, for those that don't know um, much about us, we're a, a trade business in Albury Wodonga. Um, originally, we were just plumbers, and that's my background as a tradesman. Um, as, a, as a plumber, I started when I was 19 um, in, the, in the industry. Um, had never really had any um, ambition to become a tradesman until, until about that time. Um, decided that uni wasn't, um, yeah, t decided against university at the time anyway, even just for a little while, but sort of fell in love with the trade and, and here we are, but um, we're, uh, yeah, so a trade business. So we have plumbers. Um, we do a lot of air conditioning work with refrigeration and um, also electrical. So plumbing is one of those games where there's a very large spectrum of what we can offer. And, and um, over the years, we've really grown to, to reach every end of the spectrum in that regard, but also add on a, a few other um, trades to complement it. And we become a real licensed trade service. So that's what we do here at Tonkin. Yep, sure. And, and how long have you been doing this for? Um, so the, the business is uh, 42 years old. So yep. um, not, I'm not quite that old, but um, but mm -hmm. I've been in it for, yeah, so since I was 19. So I like, do the yep. math about 18 years in the game now. So and, um, been around for a while, I suppose. Yep. And, and you said you took over from, from your dad. So yep. when, when did that happen? Yeah, uh, so my uh, parents, uh, they retired. Uh, they, they retired in... 2015. Mm -hmm. um, so myself and Victoria, we, we purchased a business, business then. That was my wife, Victoria. Um, she was uh, from a real estate background and, and had a, you know, a lot of passion for that sort of sector, which we could service as a, as a service provider. Um, and, um, and we sort of yeah, joined forces then and put our energy into this. And um, we've managed to grow quite a, quite a um, big way in that time yeah, uh, no, since 2015. Yeah. Fantastic. And it's, uh... You know, I'm, I've, I've been following you a little bit as well and seeing you know, all the awards and everything that you've been winning as a business as well. So well done. Thanks, mate. So I, I guess, you know, at that time that you, you've taken over the business and, you know, it was not long before COVID started to hit. So what, what's the biggest impact that COVID 
has had on your business? Um, well, uh, you know, to, to some extent, uh, being an uh, being a central service provider, we're sheltered, you know, from a lot of the hardships that a lot of the other industries obviously were um, uh, impacted by. Um, but at the same token, you know, every everybody was affected by the pandemic. But um, but we we really honed in on um, you know a few of the the business solutions that we really needed to to um, bring in to to thrive through the pandemic, and and that was. Um, becoming a lot more digitally um, based business, you know, a, a business that can be um, not run from pen and paper. We've never been one of those businesses. And we, we like to think that we're quite ahead of the game in that respect, but really had to, um, to, you know, up our game in that, in that regard um, and to, to, you know, run a business, run an office um, that can continue to, to operate, um, you know, working remotely, those sort of things. Um, and, and be really flexible on the spot. Like, you know, not, not many people had much notice this is coming, but we sort of, um, and I don't, don't really um, like the term, but but uh, we really pivoted quickly. And those that did that mm. were able to get through it um, and and thrive. And, and I think, you know, looking back, um, the, the pandemic, you know, it probably brought, brought the best out of a lot of businesses and a lot of people, you know, that, that um, the t- times get tough, you know, tough get going. Yes. Um, and, yeah. and those that come out of that uh, pandemic, you know, luckily, you know, as, as, as much as you know, a lot of um, businesses weren't, didn't have, you know, the, the same ability to get through from circumstances out of control, but we were able to come through it stronger than when we entered the pandemic, which is, which is great. Now, looking back, um, a lot of the, a lot of the, um, the decisions we made and, and changes we implemented are still here today and, and, and um, holding us in better stead than we were to start with, which yeah. we may not have ever got to. Had it not happened. Yeah. So if you were to think about, say, t- two of those things that have, yep. that you've had to pivot with and that you've had to change, what yep. would be the t- the top two that ha- have had the biggest impact on your business? Um, probably, um, probably really um, it comes, we talk about flexibility in the workplace nowadays and, and the ability for uh, business owners to, understand their their staff and what their needs are and i suppose they all well it's taken over control a lot of those things um you know through the pandemic where um, people were working remotely because it was mandated by the government for that to be but but um we found now that that's become um something that employers are looking for is that flexibility and the ability to work remotely or not necessarily at their um at anything you know for any reason other than necessity um, mm-hmm. But that ability to, to do that, so we've had to integrate quite a few you know, systems into our business, you know, with our software and, and things like that, our phone systems, for example, yep. um, so that we can operate the business from wherever we are, you know, and our staff can work in the business from where the, wherever they are as well. So, so yep. it works Fantastic. well for the works well for the business owner, but also you know for the employees. And I think we'll we'll continue to find um, that 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 ability to be flexible and work with your team is, is what, what staff are looking for in employment these days. So um, I suppose that sort of might, might be sort of two and one there, if you know what I mean, the ability to, to be flexible with the employees, but also um, have the systems and processes in place that can enable them to do that. Yep. Um, yeah, re- re- really, really important uh, in business. So uh, yeah, no, congratulations on that because it's, it's it's one of those things that you know you can either approach things from a, a glass half full or a glass half empty perspective, and uh, you know what you've just outlined is definitely being glass half full. So yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, awesome stuff. Um, so since you you've been in running the business, James, what's been the biggest issues that you've had to overcome, either within the business or personally? Um, issues are, uh, I, I guess we have issues on, the, on a day-to-day basis to some degree. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I can't really um, can't really identify many diabolical issues that I've, that I've found. You know, there's there's often um, bugbears of running a business, and I think that just that just sort of comes with the territory and um, helps build resilience. You know what I mean? To um, to get through those, and and um, and like you said before, you know that it's a glass half uh, full approach to every day is how I sort of roll with it. Um, there's mm. not much that really comes to mind where, where I um, I could really get on my soapbox about, to be honest, Phil, but um, um, <laughs> yep. probably for, from from my perspective, um, 
living on the border um, definitely has, has come with its challenges, um, whether it be um, from authorities or um, or from a licensing perspective. Um, mm. Living on the border comes sometimes has been very cumbersome. Now, we went through the pandemic, I suppose, um, living on the border with our, our city split in half, you know what I mean, with um, with the border closures. And that was, that was you know, just a, a small part of it. But um, we sort of deal with that regularly on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, yeah. um, running a business of our size and the amount of employees that we have um, living on both sides of the border, dealing with authorities on both sides of the border, um, you know, that that's beginning to be um, more and more challenging the, the bigger we get. Yes, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, and I think that this is where the, the cross-border initiatives that have been generated by both states is, is really important. So it's going to be um, interesting to see how all of that plays, it, plays itself out. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 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 Are, are you participating in any of those forums at all, James? Uh, we have, yeah. We've, we've, we've given some feedback in a, in a few mediums. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that sort of takes time, I think, um, but for for change to come through, but uh, we're watching it closely, and um, yeah, hopefully, you know, I think in in a few years' time, we'll look back on this and remember how we used to do it. It'll be one of those sort of things, um, yes. yeah. You know, and and that will be that'll be that. So, what's what's one thing that you've learned about yourself during your journey in business? Um. Probably learn a lot about myself, but um, but it's it's yeah, interesting question. Um, not not really prepared <laughs> for that one, but um, if if there's uh, there's things I've learned, it's 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 really about um, uh, you know absorbing the pressure each each day, and not letting not letting it show. Um, being the person that I want to be at work um, yes. to to my colleagues, my staff here. Um, often get asked, oh, don't you ever get stressed, you know, and, I, and I, I don't seem like I ever get stressed. I probably do carry some stress at some level, but, but I, I don't tend to show it. And um, I think that's, um, that's one, one part of my, uh, my being is that um, I seem to be quite resilient in that respect yeah. um, and, and, and need to be um, given that. So um, how every... do you manage your stress? Uh, not, not really sure, mate, to be honest. I mean, I, um, I don't go home and, and, you know, beat up on a, a punch bag or, um, you know, carry a stress ball around, anything like that. I think it's just really about understanding the, the, your surroundings and, and knowing what, what outcome you want in a situation and being focused on that. Um, yes. yep. You know, I've got a great relationship with my wife, obviously. Um, we, we go home, we talk, and we talk it out every night, you know, dissect the day, um, get off our chest and, and unwind and, and spend time with the kids. I think um, it's one of the, the good, uh, the best skills I've got at the moment is has been the ability to turn off um, after work or, or when time permits. You know, you're obviously yeah. always going to care about it, but um, you also need time out. Um, and you know, we're we're really good at um, making sure we book a holiday, get some time out, um, build a business that can can not only operate but thrive when you're absent. Um, yes. You're obviously yeah. always there, and especially nowadays. You know, it's just pick up your iPhone and I can um, get a snapshot of what's going on in the business at any point in time of the day, no matter where I am in the world sort of thing. So, um, but that ability to turn off, uh, refresh, um, it, it keeps, keeps me going. I don't really have a real means of um, stress management other than, you know, just dealing day by day, get to the end of the week, have a beer on a Friday sort of thing. And, um, and, you know, and tune out for it for a day or two if you can and then and back into yeah. it. So look, I, I think that that's that's one of the most important things about leadership is being level headed, being in control of the surroundings, the situation, no matter what gets fired at you, um, is being able to approach it with a very, very objective outlook as to, OK, what's the outcome that I want to achieve from? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Now look at that's a, that's a fantastic skill, and it's it's one that you know you need to be continually working on. So, um, yeah. All right. Um, okay. We'll go with two more questions, James. So, uh, what would you say to anyone thinking of going into business today? Um. I think um, I think it's a question from from that respect is that 
you know, anyone, anyone's got the ability to, to do it. They just really un- need to understand what their goals are and, and set, mm-hmm. you know, set off to achieving those. I think a, people, a, lot of, a lot of people underestimate their ability to, to, to you know, go out and, and, and do something like start a business. Um, it's, it's not for everyone, obviously. Um, it, it comes a lot, lot more than it probably seem, seems on the surface. But um, for anyone starting out, I, I think it's like believing in yourself um, and, and hard work. Be prepared for some hard work. Um, we, we look back on our success and, and, and what's, what it's taken to get there. There's been a lot of sacrifices made and, and a lot of hours put in, you know, in and after hours um to to get there but um but in the long run if you have a you know, long-term perspective you can you believe you can make it um yes. yeah be patient you know get some good people around you um have, have a mentor or two um but yeah you know, set some goals and get through them year by year and eventually you know hopefully things turn out yeah yeah um all of those things are really important so you know just in summary then self-confidence self-belief perseverance, persistence, and everything else that you can actually throw at that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Um, So uh, one more question. Let's see. What's the best advice that you would give an 18-year-old James Tonkin? Uh, um, Well, what I was doing when I was 18, you, yeah, there's probably a few hard uh, lessons I needed to learn at that stage. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, let's, let's, um, I, I think uh, looking back, um, I'm sort of really very proud of where I've got gotten to now in, in the, the time since I've, um, so I really look back on my time since I was 18, it's like really, that was my career um, mm-hmm. ever since then sort of thing. Um, uh, the, the, there was certainly a lot of hard times in the, in the early years. Um, especially as an apprentice, you know, so I was looking back, I wasn't quite an apprentice, I was 18, but I was close to starting and they were definitely the hardest years. Um, and, and that sort of, I sort of lived through a lot of our young apprentices at the moment um, and, and re- relating to, to what they're going through. So, you know, it was definitely the most challenging part of my career. And it, you might think that's crazy. Now we're looking with, you know, 85 staff and, you know, all sorts of chaos happening here at the moment, but um, yeah. we've, looking back i found the most challenging was learning something new um that i've never done before and you know um and and struggling to understand some of the concepts and you know those first two years um in a, in a new career are the foundation years but um they're also the hardest hardest time so i look back on on that and um i'd, I'd probably give myself a tap on the shoulder and say you'll be right you just got to persevere you know yes. that's that perseverance um and yep. I say that to all our young young staff. It's like I can relate. They were the tough times, and it'd be the same for every everyone in whatever career you're going to, whether you left university and you you know trying to get that first job, or um, you know you, you, you're starting out when you're 18. You just got to get in. You got to get stuck into something. Um, and and um, so yeah, that those first few years, I, I definitely look back on and 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 yeah, yeah. just yeah. just a just a calm hand on my shoulder would be nice. So I got that. I had the good support around me, but I do look back and think, thank God those days are over. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. And like, you know, for any other 18 year olds that are actually watching this, um, again, it just comes back to that self belief, having confidence, persevering and persisting, chase your dreams, chase your goals. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. Yeah. Well, Thank you for your input today, James. It's been absolutely wonderful having a chat with you. Yeah, it has been, likewise. Uh, getting a better insight into what your journey in business has been. And uh, thank you again. Great, no problem. Thanks, Phil.